I was wrong about Britney Peach, but there's something very strange about her story too. Let's dive into the latest update from Britney Peach and I'll provide my commentary wearing the lens of an everyday worker who climbed the ranks to an executive in tech over a couple of decades, and hopefully it'll be a value. But if you don't know anything about Britney Peach, she was a Cloudflare employee who posted herself getting laid off on TikTok. It went viral with over 20 million views and she became a sensation overnight. Now I made two videos on Britney's story before. One was on the layoff video itself and one was when she posted another one several months later saying how desperate she had become. You may want to check those out too and the link should appear at the top of this video. Okay, let's check out Britney's latest video now. Hi, TikTok. So if you remember, that was me. Um, and I'm employed now. Crazy. Took me about seven to eight months to find a job. And in that time, uh, it was just absolutely wild. I feel like I still have not healed from all of that. Um, it's still lingering today. I'm still getting messages today. It's just been so crazy. Okay, well, first off, it's great to see that she's got a job. She's happy. It took her about seven or eight months to get a job, which is not unusual, frankly, in the tech environment we have today. But fantastic just to see each other that she's doing a lot better. And I even posted some videos a few months ago uh, before I got this new job where I was basically giving up. And that was totally the case. I completely gave up on trying to find a job. I was beyond over looking for a job. Um, the interview processes were absolutely insane. I felt like people were wasting my time. Um, people were just trying to talk to me, just talk to me, not for a job. Um, I would do four or five rounds of interviews, do a presentation, and I wouldn't get the job because some, I didn't have enough experience or something. And I just kind of got to a point where I was like, no, nope, it's not because of my experience, not because of it. it's literally because they don't want to hire me because of the video that I shared. Okay, and that's one of the major things I mentioned in my previous video is that as a hiring manager or even as an executive, uh, they would view what Brittany did as a breach of trust, basically. And it'd be very difficult for someone to hire her with all of that information out there because companies just don't want somebody they think will probably be a loose cannon when they don't agree with them. I'm not saying it's correct. I'm just saying that most hiring managers, that's how they'll think. And that was something that like I came to the conclusion to back in August. And I felt like I had been screwed over by so many people and opportunities just kept shutting in my face. And so I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm not even going to look for a new job anymore. I'm going to go full force on TikTok. I'm going to try to make money in other ways. But and that's one of the things I suggested in my previous videos as well. You know, working in a corporate environment is, may not be for everyone. And so for some people who want the independence, the freedom, they want to exercise their own judgment and creativity, pursuing uh, more of an entrepreneurial path or um, an out-of-the-box path may be for those people. And it can work out really well. The only thing I'd say is just for those considering that, just be aware that that path is also not very easy. It's actually very, very hard. In many ways, it's harder than working for a company. Uh, but, you know, for the people with the right attitude, temperament, and drive, it can be very rewarding as well. I just didn't know what that looked like. Um, but a by the grace of fucking God and the universe, I had an opportunity to come my way that... I am so unbelievably thankful for, and I need it. I get questions all, I got questions all the time about how are you paying for all this? Oh, your parents pay for this. We have a sugar daddy or your boyfriend pays for everything, whatever. No, that's not the case at all. I have been completely self-sufficient on paying my rent and all my bills and everything since I've been laid off. Um, I don't know why it's so hard to believe that people can be responsible with their money and save their money. And I did well in my previous job. So I had quite a bit of money saved up um, that I was going to use for a down payment on a house or getting a new car, that kind of thing. So all of those savings are completely gone now. So I was at a point where I had about a thousand dollars left 
to my name. Um, and that was very scary. Okay. Well, it's great to see that she's been responsible with, with her finances. And she said she did well at her previous job. I assume that means at Cloudflare, she, she was in tech, you know, tech typically pays good salaries. She was in sales. So during her ramp up, she probably made a good amount of money. And I'm thinking that also when she was laid off, she was given a severance package that helped her through these many months, but, um, she has been able to manage herself. Okay. She was reaching the end of her rope here. Um, but she did fine overall financially. So that's good to hear. And I was going to need to start depending on my boyfriend, for example, on starting to pay some of those bills. Luckily never had to come to that because this job came my way. And so, um, this job is absolutely incredible. I am super excited. Um, I still have all of these feelings about, you know, being a part of a corporate organization and I'm still kind of feeling like I don't want to be in this forever. Like this isn't something I want to rely on forever. Okay. Now, um, personally after joining a company, um, I would be a bit cautious about putting all of this out there and saying, I'm not sure about being part of a corporate organization. Um, well, it seems like, you know, the organization she's in is okay, uh, with someone being a bit out more outspoken and things like that. And if so, great. Most organizations I would say are not like that. They don't want to see that people having second thoughts about being in an organization. They may question whether the person is really committed to them or to even working in a company long-term. In this case, I don't know all the details of Brittany's situation. I don't know the details of, of her management and their thinking. Uh, so I'm just going to talk in generalities of, I think, what would or would not be a good idea for most people. And I think for most people, or right after being hired, putting an accountant saying that you're not sure about being part of a corporation is not the best thing to do. But given that, Right now I'm in my late twenties and I do still have so many goals and aspirations to hit with being a salesperson and selling services or technology. Like that is still a part of me that I never, I haven't gotten to fulfill yet. Like there's still so many goals I want to hit and I'm still looking to be that top performer. Now though, I'm just thinking. Okay. Before she goes on to the next part, I think this part of what she says is actually good to convey, uh, to the company and, and to management and just to others that there are these goals, uh, this drive that she has to hit these goals about being a top sales performer. These are the kind of things management typically wants to hear because that means their goals and their interests are aligned with the needs of the company. Maybe this isn't going to be forever. Um, but what I am hoping is that this company that I'm at now is going to be the last company that I'm ever at in terms of being in a corporate workforce. So whether I'm here for five years, 10 years, whatever it is, I want to be able to hit my goals. I want to kill it. I want to kick ass and we'll see what happens from there. Okay. So this is good. Uh, at least she's laid out a time frame now saying that, um, you know, it's going to be like, she's thinking in terms of a five-year time frame or a 10-year time frame, And I think that's reasonable. I think that's a lot better than how she started out, uh, the, point in the conversation about she's not sure about being in a, in a corporation. At some point, I don't want to rely on the corporate structure for my livelihood. And it is still a little scary to once again, put my, my livelihood and my future in the hands of another company. That is something that is scary to me. And so I am still trying to work on ways that I am not 100% reliant on a corporate company. Okay. Now I actually think she makes a really good point on this one. Um, not being a hundred percent reliant on a company or a corporation. Remember that, uh, the company only hires employees when they are able to, and when the needs align. And so it's true. The company can change priorities, can change business, business conditions can change. And so I think every individual, like Brittany is saying, should have a plan B or even a C and think about, well, you know, what happens if I no longer have a job? Everybody should make sure you have savings in place 
They should even be constantly networking and seeing what else is out there because you never know what might happen. It just takes one meeting where the company can sever ties with you. Or my savings and my money. And, you know, I just felt like this whole time my life has been on pause. I haven't had any income come in except for like $2,000 from TikTok total. Like, which Okay. And this is especially important for people to know. It's a lot of work, takes a lot of energy to make money on social media. There are people that do it. They've typically been doing it for a long time. But one of the challenges Brittany had being on the TikTok platform in particular is that you can have tens of millions of views and make very, very little money, especially if you don't monetize it the right way. Which is nothing over the course of eight months. Like that doesn't even, that pays for like a month of rent. And so, yeah, I'm just at an at a interesting place in my life. So I wanted to come on here and kind of just ramble and share that. Um, so stay tuned for some things that may be coming in the works for me. Um, but in the meantime, what do you guys want to see for me? I am still an open book and willing to share my experience. Um, I feel like that's all I can do is just share my experience and my thoughts on it and, um, you know, continue to let people know that, I, whatever they have been through in terms of a layoff or getting let, um, being let go in, in an unreasonable way, or just, it's just shocking and whatever this, so many people deal with so much bullshit from the corporate world. Like I still want to be a resource and, um, a source of, of help and, you know, camaraderie and just letting people know that they're not alone when they experience something like that too. Um, I'm just really happy to have this job. And if anyone has any questions about why I, I chose working for this company in this job and, um, or anything about my, uh, interview processes or anything that I'm doing now, day in the life of a salesperson working from home, um, let me know. And I'm here to help. Okay. Well, um, uh, that's a little questionable salesperson working from home. And I, and I mentioned earlier that there's something very strange about her story. And so we'll dig into this a little bit and see, you know, let's see what you think about her story as well. Bye. Okay. But first, um, I do want to make a couple comments here as we wrap up uh, her video. Uh, one is, um, it seems like she's setting herself up to be more than just a corporate employee. And it looks like she wants to leverage her fame and notoriety um, in some other way probably being some kind of coach or be having a presence on social where she can uh, earn some income streams. And I don't necessarily think that's a bad idea. Um, I think it'll be interesting to see how she navigates this with her current role. And I've got to think that people at her company are also wondering, you know, when she talks about things like corporate bullshit and things like that, are they, you know, that happens at every company. So is she going to actually talk about those things uh, in her social media presence? Uh, typically, companies are not very tolerant of those things. It'll be interesting to see. And as more information comes out, I'll be sure to post it here because I think this is a very interesting story and um, we can all learn a lot from it. And in fact, I'm actually trying to reach out to Brittany myself to see if I can get a deeper dive interview on some questions I have, actually, which we are going to get into now. Okay, so in Brittany's video update, she didn't say anything about the actual job that she got, how she got it, the level, the pay, all of those kind of things. So let's take a quick look at her LinkedIn and see what we can find. <clears throat> so you can see uh, Brittany is now the SAP Regional Sales Director of the Southeast. Um, what does that mean exactly? Well, let's scroll down and take a look at her experience here. You can see that she's the Regional Sales Director of a company called Navisite. Now, my first thought is that, wow, she went from being uh, a, essentially a training on-ramp at Cloudflare as a mid-market account executive. I noticed that she's removed a lot of her background information that she had before under Cloudflare. Um, but now she's a director level at Navisite. Now, <clears throat> the first thing that comes to mind is that, wow, that's quite a jump. So at different companies, titles can mean different things. Um, you know, at a smaller company, a director might be equivalent to a non-director role at a different company, at a larger company.
But if we take a look at Navisite itself, we can see, let's see, how many people does Navisite have? So it's between one and 5,000 people. Um, a reasonable size company, not super large. So it seems that's a smaller company than Cloudflare, but still I'm a little unsure about how she was able to get a director level position um, with this company Navisite, which is basically a services and consulting arm that of Accenture. Accenture acquired this company. Um, she didn't have initially a technical background as she got into an account executive role without the typical pathways, as I mentioned in my previous video. And now she's got a director level position without showing any demonstrable sales success at her previous companies, namely Cloudflare. And I think even Snowflake, it was questionable how she left that company. And for me, it as an executive, as a hiring manager, it just raises some red flags as to how she was able to get this director level position without a technical background, uh, without the requisite sales experience that uh, most people are expected to have, and then climb to a director level position without a track record of success in the previous companies. I could be totally wrong. Brittany could be just an outstanding candidate. Uh, but all I'm saying is that from a hiring manager's perspective, from an executive's perspective, it does raise some questions. Now, Brittany posted a couple months ago about getting this position of a SAP regional sales director at Navisite. And she talks about how tough it was to be unemployed for several months. She talks about what she was looking for in her job search. And she had three things she was looking for to work for a company, a product, and service she believed in to join a team with values such as professional excellence and well-being and to find a great leader. And she points out this person called Brian Pruner as somebody who believed in her. So let's take a look at uh, Brian Pruner's background and see what we can learn. Okay, so he's at Navisite. He's an SVP at Navisite. He's an SVP at Navisite, and let's take a look at his background. Okay, so he's been at Navisite for three years and uh, three months. He himself started out as a regional sales director, so it seems to be a similar position as the position Brittany currently has. But let's take a look at the rest of his background. And look, He's been a manager, managing director before. He was a vice president at SAP, which is a huge enterprise IT company before that. He was a territory sales manager. So three to almost four years in sales at SAP itself. Uh, before that, he was an Oracle corporation in sales. Um, and, and, you know, if you kind of look at his background, he has a pretty long background being in sales at enterprise tech companies and, and other roles as well. So when I look at his background and let's see, seven years at Oracle, two more years at another software company, that's nine years, co-founder and president, let's say roughly a year at some other company, startup he tried to start, um, that's 10 plus years, let's say 16 years again at Oracle Corporation sales. Um, this is like 15 plus years before he got this, uh, regional sales director role, uh, at Navisite. And I am confused and I don't understand how Brittany, um, without having a technical background, without going into the normal pathways to sales at an enterprise tech company is able to get such a role. I do wonder what kind of role it is because she did say she was going to be able to work from home. And, you know, for most sales roles, um, they're not work from home roles. One of the key things in sales is often to be at the customer site, to meet customers face to face. So maybe Brittany is just an exceptional candidate. Maybe she has outstanding abilities. That could all be true. Uh, but from a hiring manager's perspective, from an executive's perspective, there's some definite red flags that I'm confused about and don't seem to quite add up as to how she was able to land such a role. I could be totally wrong. If any of you out in the audience out there 
knows anything more about the situation, please enter in the comments below. I'm also going to try to contact Brittany directly. You know, I'm rooting for her. I hope she is as successful as possible. Maybe she's just one of those stellar candidates out there. There are such people that are able to just do amazing things that most other people are simply not being able to do. I'll keep everybody posted on whether I'm actually able to land a deeper dive interview with Brittany to understand how she was able to pull this off. And in the meantime, let me know what you think in the comments below. Now, for most people, I still would, would advise everybody to not do what Brittany did. Uh, for every Brittany out there, there's many, many, many people who never get opportunities, who never make it. And I don't want to dash anybody's dreams. If you feel you must pursue this, if you have the passion, if you have a drive to be unsocial, do your own thing, you know, go for it. All I'm trying to do here is provide a perspective of how most companies, how most hiring managers think. So if you want to be in that bucket of working for a company, understanding how things work, how hiring managers think, and what is most probable in terms of the outcomes you can expect based on what you do, that's the sort of perspective I'm trying to provide in this channel. So for most people, I don't advise doing what Brittany did, but of course, everybody has their own path and you need to think deeply about what's right for you. But that's all we have time for today. For more tips that I can't show here, feel free to subscribe to my newsletter in the description. And if you found this video valuable, please like and subscribe. Until next time, stay savvy, my friends.